to the JTM Community Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Melvin. If you're watching this, you already know who our guest today is, as he has appeared on the podcast several times before. If you're listening to this, we'll get to that in just a moment. Of course, if you want to touch base with me, you can check out j-tm.community and uh, just reach out if you're interested in advancement advising. Otherwise, add a forward slash uh, podcast to that, and it'll take you exactly to uh, just the podcast-specific info. Easiest thing that you can do to be a part of the community to get a little bit of that human connection, humor, um, and inspiration, motivation is to join the uh, social media's website, top right-hand side, uh, best uh, part would be to join the Facebook group as every Monday uh, a new poll gets posted. You all determine what the topics of the upcoming topics will be. Send in your stories, your experiences, your ideas, and those get also turned into uh, topics to be voted on in the future. Of course, you can check out the TikToks, which is not the TikToks we make, but it is the liked videos, again, for that motivation, inspiration, human connection, and humor in there. Without further ado, we are here with my good friend, Mason Comstock, and I'll have you introduce yourself. Want to, for folks who haven't seen previous episodes with you, we'll give them a little bit of intro about yourself. Sure. Uh, good to see everybody again. Glad, glad to be here. Jason gets to talk to everybody about some good topics. Um, my name is Mason Comstock. Um, four years old. Been married for 18 years. Got two children. My daughter's 18. My son's 15. And uh, I'm active duty military member. Although anything that we discuss here is not representative of the government or anything military, but I might reference some experiences that I've had. So everything's going to be my own uh, opinions and viewpoints on anything that we talk about today. So glad to be here. Like I said, thanks, Mason. I already, I already appreciate that. We're going to have four topics. So this will uh, ultimately be a mini series, four topics. The first uh, topic is actually two. So technically it's five. Each one will be about 15 minutes for uh, viewers who are new to the podcast. You'll see a 15 minute timer uh, pop up on screen. That's to help us kind of stay on track because we tend to get off uh, off track pretty easily. So that'll keep uh, our pacing hopefully uh, pretty decent and it gives folks a really good starting and stopping point um, as it kind of tracks along. The four topics, five technically, uh, the first one, so part one will be all the small things and conflict avoidance. Part two will be paralyzed by perfection. Part three will be pride in others' efforts and successes. And part four is what constitutes actual quality time. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into part one, which is a tied topic, all the small things and conflict avoidance. So we'll try and split it 50-50 or so. Mace, when you think of the words, all the small things, what does that even mean to you? My brain immediately goes to a song, but <laughs> do you know the song? No, <laughs> no, I didn't go to a song on that one, Jason. It was more... Uh... You know, throughout my life, uh, as I've gotten a little bit older, I've realized that, um, man, I really put uh, people into two categories, like givers and takers, right? There's some people that, that give a lot of themselves into others, and there's other people that choose to take a lot, right? And we've probably all, all known some examples of those people in our life on both spectrums. Um, another person that you constantly have on your uh on your podcast, uh, William Squires, he's what I would consider a giver, right? He's a, a school teacher. He pours into other people constantly. Um, and those people, uh, do a lot of things. My spouse is like that as well. She constantly pours into others. And I've realized that over time, um, you know, like we don't need to do a lot, um, to show that we care about the, those, those other people around us. Right. When we talk about like, Hey, taking the time to make a phone call once a week to a friend or even an acquaintance that we want to be a friend. Or if we just take the time to acknowledge somebody like saying good morning to them as we walk by them. Um, and 
like we treat everybody so much like strangers. And even in today's age, like a lot of people don't even know their neighbors to the left and the right. Um, so when I hear all the small things, it is those common courtesies, those, those very basic things that we can do to show appreciation, to give into somebody else, even though it doesn't take us a lot of time. It's, it's just a little bit of effort and people really notice us a mm -hmm. little bit of effort that we can give. And sometimes we get really complacent in our own lives and we mm -hmm. forget to do that. And then that's when people really start looking at you like, Oh, you just take from everybody else and don't, don't, uh, don't ever give anything away. So, uh, I think it's a really fine balancing act and we need to, as people, as a society, as a community, um, really choose to do our best to acknowledge others and to, uh, give a little, little bit into them. So hmm. what that looks like for each individual, all those little things, uh, I think that takes a little bit of understanding and looking at the person, but it can start somewhere, something basic as like saying hi, remembering my birthday, right? Like those little things mean something to people. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. When, as you were saying that, what it what made me think of two sides of the same coin, which are almost inherently hypocritical, uh, as my brain was thinking about it, it was along the lines of what you're saying, which is essentially the little things can make big differences, right? So the little things are um, frequent impacts that build up over time that have value. Again, remembering a birthday, saying hello, waving, opening a door for somebody, uh, sending a card, right? Just the, the, what we would consider like smaller gestures of things, right? Uh, whether it's to friends, family, or, or even strangers, right? Um, even something as, um, uh, what came to mind as I said that is, it's not uncommon if, uh, Trace and I are out grabbing a bite to eat or something and we notice, and it's typically, and, um, not that other people don't deserve it, but for whatever reason, uh, the elderly hits our heart. So if we see an elderly person eating on their own, we'll typically pick up their meal, um, just out of like a level of compassion or, or empathy. Uh, and not that we believe that person to be doing unwell. Um, but it's, it's more of the idea of like adoration and respect for that person. Um, we grew both, her and I have both grown up traditionally. So it's just a common thing that, that, uh, would hit us at the same time when it comes to the struggles in life, right? So all the small things, if they're healthy or good, can build up to have positive impacts. If they're negative or conflicting, right, they can build up to have negative impacts uh, in that regard. So, I mean, I'm sure we've all heard the expression, don't sweat the small things, right? So uh, initially I thought, and I literally said, it's almost hypocritical, but as my brain is processing it, it's coming to more clarity. It's not, it's exactly the same. It's whether it's good or bad, it builds up and can have that kind of impact. And what we try, what I think we're both talking about is focusing on building up the small things in a positive direction and having positive impacts on ourselves uh, and other people and to let go or brush off the, the smaller things that have a negative impact. So the person that didn't hold the door, right? Um, or you held the door and they didn't say thank you, right? Or you held the door and they seem to have like this fuck off kind of attitude um, is to, to just kind of allow that to, to bounce off uh, as, as you move forward. Because it's not uncommon that we allow the negative um, small things to build up over time and they, it becomes to people have the sensation that they're much bigger than they really are. The whole making mountains out of molehills, like there's so many um, sayings, sure. like don't cry over spilt milk, like all of these sayings uh, to, to highlight that, that idea. However, especially helping folks in private practice, it's really hard for people to see that uh, when they're in that experience. It's the whole, you can't see the forest through the trees kind of thing. Um, sure. So if, if we can take a, a moment to just take a step back 
it becomes much clearer for folks. Uh, and that clarity makes it become easier. I'm not saying easy, but easier to do. Uh, if you can remove yourself just a little bit, um, but when people are like really in the midst of it, it's hard for folks to do, which has always been an interesting thing because we, we can get stuck in the midst of the negative, but that rarely happens on the positive side where you get like stuck in this sense of joy or like adoration. Yeah. Cause those, those sorts of things are really fleeting for us. And I think it's, um, kind of goes back to hunter gatherers, like humankind, how we have evolved where, yeah. uh, negative lessons are really learned yep. well because that keeps survival. us alive. Yeah. yeah. Survival stuff. So, um, yeah, I think we're prone to that, but as we are aware of it, then we can try to temper that as much as possible. And, uh, I, it was funny because like I hadn't even really considered the negative side, like you were saying, but you're right. And, and like, we are creatures of our own like habits, right? So if we choose to engage in negative habits constantly mm -hmm. and negative thoughts, then that's how our lifestyle is going to be until we can break out of that cycle. And that can be extremely difficult to do. Another great example is driving around in a car. We call it road rage, right? <laughs> like I mean, that guy cut me off. Like, like, what does it matter? Like, realistically, we don't know that person's story. Did they just happen to, mm -hmm. I mean, did they need to get somewhere really fast? Like, was he rushing to the hospital because his kid just got hurt, right? Like, we don't know anything about that, but we will choose to engage in negative thoughts instantly before any other thing comes to pass. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I mean, we all fall victim to it. It's just one oh, of yeah. those things that we're, where we've got to balance that out sometimes and, and try to like seek out the best in people. Yep. The, I'm, you're absolutely right in that. And the fact that we do it all, all the time. Um, and when we are in that negative mindset, it becomes the lens we view the world through. So the kids left uh, a cup on the counter. They've done it a thousand times before. Right. But today, for some reason, really chaps my ass. Right. Even though they've done it a thousand times before, and maybe it is because they've done it a thousand times. So it's the, it's the, the mental mindset. And when we can acknowledge that, and I, I try to do it well, I don't, I'm not perfect at it. Uh, but usually if I, I notice like that I'm in a certain kind of frame of mind, I usually call myself out. So I'll tell somebody that I am that way. It's usually Tracy. Um, because I, by acknowledging it and putting it out there, it almost creates a level of accountability. So then that feeling, I don't allow that feeling to then dictate my, my actions moving forward. Yeah. The let's uh, jump to uh, the other part uh, of this. The other topic related kind of to this is conflict avoidance, uh, which I just created a bit of a segue in, in the level of accountability. So uh, a lot of folks will feel a certain way, but they don't want, they don't want to have that uh, accountability. So they, folks will often, uh, especially this day and age, will use their struggle as a reason to do things or act poorly. So when you think of the, the idea of conflict avoidance, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I was actually, I, I would go in a different um, direction as what you're talking about. Um, sure. I, I am a conflict avoidant person. I do not like conflict. I don't like it when people are behaving a certain way. I don't like it when emotions are running high, especially mm -hmm. in a negative fashion where people are like mad at each other, um, angry, upset, um, throwing like a, an, a, a mini temper tantrum, right? Like, mm -hmm. I just don't think that's the appropriate way to behave in any fashion as an adult. Um, however, I realize that people do that. Um, it also gives, uh, individuals, um, that have a strong personality, a way to kind of force their way mm -hmm. through this world mm -hmm. where they, cause I would say most adults are conflict avoidant. Like we don't want to be engaged with those types of people. So you got, you got individuals that are very uh, strong willed and forceful. Um, and then nobody will call them out on it. Right. Yeah. And we, we see that constantly with people cutting in line, taking advantage of the kindness of others. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately, I mean, going right back to what I was just talking about with the, like the problem with traffic and the rules of the road, when yep. people are choosing to, to cut 
cut in at the last minute on a on an interchange or something and, mm-hmm. and all it does is create traffic for everybody else uh, but those social norms when we're in a vehicle and then we we feel like we're in our own little world uh, versus uh if we were like in a line and seeing that guy you know you'd have somebody that steps up and is the hero in that situation and says like hey this is the right thing to do so like like get back in line with the social norms um but yeah that vast majority of people won't um won't confront anybody because they are very conflict avoidant and yeah. uh, that can be really bad in the workplace and and everything else so um yeah it's both good and bad i i suppose and we once again we have to find a way to balance that and figure out okay when is appropriate times to step up and step in or come out of our comfort zones or this means enough that we've got to be willing to confront somebody else about the way that they're doing something so uh, it just takes deliberate effort i think absolutely yeah for me when i think of conflict avoidant i guess my my brain filters it a little differently through it it becomes discomfort avoidant um because i don't think well that's not true most people don't like elevated conflicts uh, which was a lot of what you described um but most people their the way they feel trumps their actions so even um let's say uh, something happened in our friendship and you and i uh will call each other out pretty quickly um and it, but we do it tastefully like there's there's no like male intent assumed uh within that and i mean it happens rarely uh o- over the years but it, it has happened on the rare occasion most people wouldn't do that right so like i i i've always wanted the kind of friend and the the people around me to say yo dude like you are fucking up like you got a booger in your nose you know like like you you need to make an adjustment here like grab a kleenex you got some snot coming out right um versus other people they won't do that because that makes them uncomfortable even though the person was like i can't tell you how many times people have shared stories where like they had a tear in their pants or a stain on their clothes or they had um something showing that shouldn't be and they went through a grocery store and when they got out they were like how did nobody fucking tell me that whole sure. uh, hundreds of people right and nobody said anything and it's it's that discomfort avoidance uh that i'm talking about which when people essentially i'm going to use a little brasher terms here when people cower to that progress stops right because growth change only only comes through discomfort and if we avoid the, that very thing, you don't get the the positive elements, right? So people become complacent in their desire to constantly seek uh, a level of comfort. And I'm not saying it's fun. I hate having confrontation. Like, I don't mind having conversations, but I hate having confrontation, though at yeah. times those things are necessary. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think we need to ensure that we, especially the ones we love, like we don't want to hurt them, but, um, we try to help them grow and make them a better version of who they are. And sometimes that's really hard. And like people have a a real challenging time, like taking that critique or criticism in a positive way, instead of looking at it as a negative. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a, it can be challenging to do that appropriately for sure. But it takes both parties willing, right? Like you are yeah. willing to learn and a lot of people are not willing to learn. So they just take it as like uh, a straight up criticism. Like you're talking bad on me by, by pointing out the fact that like there's a booger hanging out of my nose. Uh, yeah, you're, you're just making fun me. of me. Yeah. Yeah. So like it needs to be on the, on the receiving end of that message. That person needs to, to be a little bit more mature about the way they're handling it. Yeah. And for me, that's the difference between um, communication and conversation versus like actual conflict. Because yep. if you can have that in um, in a productive kind of way, even though it doesn't feel good, it still goes in that direction. Versus when it just becomes like a blame game uh, kind of thing, which often is the case when folks typically uh, first come in for like couples counseling. So it's, it's helping them understand and navigate those things playing rough uh, for, for a minute there. 
Love it. Thank you, sir, for joining me uh, this morning and taking some time. I know you, you're, you've had a busy day Absolutely. already, so I really appreciate it. Of course, if you want to touch base with me, you can check out j-tm.community uh, for advancement advising uh, kind of stuff. If you want podcast specific, uh, do just add forward slash podcasts to that. If you want to be part of the community for a little bit of motivation, inspiration, human connection, and humor, go ahead and check out our socials, uh, top right hand side of the website. Of course, the best thing you can do in that regard is to join the Facebook group, which a new poll uh, gets posted every Monday. Of course, a new episode goes live every Monday as well at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Thanks again, Mace, for joining yeah, me. no problem. And for everyone being part of a community where you belong.